joins us. He's been preaching the gospel full time since, get this, 1963. He's worked with independent, non-denominational churches of Christ in Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Texas. He's written a lot. He's done a lot of things. And now we're here to talk about the power of prayer in its working things most people do not know about prayer. He's here on Author's Corner with me, Kate Delaney, on America Tonight. Walton, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. So you have all that experience. I talked about that starting in you know the early 60s. So the first question before we even talk about the book is you look at what the 60s was like to where we are today. There is a vast difference in how people uh, worship, isn't there? Yes, there is. You know, that's the value of my book, you know, is it's meeting a need that exists out there today. Yeah. So that sets it up for why you wrote the book. What were you hoping to do with the book? Well, I was looking for self-improvement, actually. You know, I was struggling as a younger preacher, you know, at the time, and I wanted to learn more about prayer and a better way, you know, to do it maybe a uh, And so I just began to do my research, and it was for my own personal use, you know, that I began to study. And uh, it worked into a book. I hadn't really planned that I was going to write a book about it at the beginning stages of it. But as I learned more about it and uh, saw, you know, that I'm not alone, I'm sure. I know there are lots of people out there that struggled in the way that I did as well, you know, uh, uh, repetition in my prayers that concerned me, you know, and not being able to know how to glorify God, you know, as well as I would like to, and the, especially the beginning parts of my prayers. So there were just a lot of things about things to pray for and to pray about, and, uh, you know, or their conditions. There are just a lot of issues in my own mind, and I, I did it for my own personal growth. And, and talking about your growth, one of the things you told me when we had a conversation off the air is you really started to really learn this in high school. You didn't have that before, right? Right. Yeah, our home was not a home. It was a godly home, but uh, prayer was not central. It was not a vocal uh, a, a focal point, uh, you know, in our uh, home life. And uh, I missed that, you know, in growing up. Uh, and uh, my parents were good parents, you know. They they were godly parents, but they were not praying parents in the in the family. Uh, and uh, so I, I missed out on that and growing, you know, as a young person. And so it was on up in my middle years, you know, before I really began to sense that I needed to get better, you know, and be better at what's one of the main things about our lives, you know, as Christians. Yeah. And and you say it in the title, the power of prayer in its working. So what do you mean by that? What is the power of prayer that you think maybe people who are Christians, are religious of any kind of religion, they what what is it that they miss? Well, they miss sometimes I think believing, you know, that prayer can really be effective in their lives and bring about things that God uh, uh, will work, you know, through prayer. I don't mean that prayer itself has the power in it, but that uh, there is power in prayer. And uh, it works, you know, if God is in the, the uh, uh, process of uh, exhibiting His will, His providential will, you know, in our lives. And so I try to make a difference, you know, between uh, God's providential will and God's perfect will, as it is revealed to us in Scripture, uh, that God is at work and that God uh, will work providentially. So I spend some time, you know, in the book, uh, you know, talking a good bit about that. 
Yeah, and in the book, and you said this, it's you have a detailed book filled with scripture. It's an informational book. What do you ultimately hope, and I think you're saying it in this conversation, but what do you hope people take away from reading your book? Well, I want them to take away that the power that is in prayer is the power that God supplies, you know, and, uh, and that uh, if we get in the practice of prayer, you know, and we really uh, develop the qualities that are essential to not only wording a good prayer, but also uh, really believing that God, you know, will work in our lives today, you know, not I don't believe miraculously, but uh, uh, I'm talking about providentially, you know, that God God is a part of uh, our prayer life, and that uh, the reason that we have certain uh, qualities, you know, laid out for us in Scripture uh, uh, is what we, who we need to be in order to find, uh, you know, the true power that is there, uh, that it begins with us. Uh, that if we are the people that God wants us to be and we come before him in prayer, prayer has the power to to make things happen. And uh, it's just a beautiful life, you know, when you once begin to grow, you know, and be able to find the words, you know, uh, not perfect words, but uh, but words. And I think we worry too much about repetition. One of the greatest things that hurts people, you know, it bothers them, that concerns them is they seem to pray the same thing over and over, you know, and they they want to get beyond that. But I don't know that we need to get beyond that. You know, uh, uh, Jesus, when he was with his disciples, you remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, he was praying with them, but he left them behind and he went forward a distance and he prayed. Came back, of course, he found them asleep. You know, and then he went back and prayed again. But the significant thing is not only what he said about them, you know, being uh, uh, careful, you know, and be awake and be, uh, you know, alert, you know, uh, especially during times of prayer. You know, uh, the the thing that he emphasized there is Jesus went three times and prayed the same thing. Well, we know that sometimes God has said no. Uh, and uh, we eventually maybe don't continue to pray the same prayer. It's like Paul, you know, he prayed three times that that thorn in the flesh might be removed. But uh, God said no each time, and he said his grace was sufficient for it. And so it's not wrong to repeat. Uh, We may have to say the same things when we're trying to find words to glorify God, usually in the beginning part of our personal prayers. You know, but uh, that's all right. You know, it's all right to say over and over to God that uh, he is great and he is merciful. He is long suffering. You know, he is a God of love, you know, uh, because all these things are true of God. and, And we're just reaching out and acknowledging the one upon whom we depend. Well, we we need to find that uh, place of of total dependence and self-surrender. And that's what my book is about. You know, it's trying to help people, you know, come to see what are the real qualities that acceptable prayer, you know, uh, would require. What are the conditions, you know, of acceptable prayer? And uh, what are the kinds of things that we should pray for? And how does Christ, as our intercessor, you know, uh, fill the role? And how does the Holy Spirit, you know, do that? So there's a lot here. And I tried to make it totally biblical, scriptural, uh, so that people could be under the right teaching and uh, and really, uh, really find benefit and profit from it. Wow, that sums it up. And and Walton, I said this in the beginning because to me it's interesting. It doesn't matter your denomination, right? It doesn't matter what kind of church you belong to. You can absolutely plug into this book. Well, any person, you know, that is a Christian can do that. You know, this book is not written for a particular group of Christians out there. You know, it's written for all, you know, all all, uh, people who are, uh, are Christians. So I'm not not trying to establish that you know uh, what i'm doing is uh, dealing with the subject of prayer and people who are, uh, who are christians you know that want to find you know uh, 
a better life, you know, in their prayer life. And after everything that you've done from high school all the way through, do you feel like, and then releasing this, this book, do you feel like, wow, I have, I really have grasped this through my preaching, through what I learned as, as a teenager and, and, and what I've gone through in my life? Well, I don't say that I have reached the peak, you know, of uh, understanding, or I, I don't think I've reached that perfect point out there in anything in my life, you know. Uh, but I get encouragement from that, you know, what I see Paul's struggle that he uh, that he had with sin, you know. Uh, we all still are, are sinners, even though we're saints. We do fall short. Sometimes, and just like Paul said of himself, he has to buffet his body and keep it under subjection, lest after he preached to others, he become a castaway. So I don't present myself as having arrived completely, you know, or knowing the perfect way, you know, to pray uh, or the perfect time. There's no set times for prayer. Pray without ceasing. Pray always. These are the kind of terms we find in Scripture, but. We can't do that 24 hours a day. You know, we we uh, have set times, but by, the Bible doesn't lay down, you know, like a third hour and the sixth hour, ninth mm-hmm. hour, even though people came to pray, you know, mm-hmm. at certain times in Bible time. Yeah, yeah. And that's the power of this book, the power of prayer and its working, things most people do not know about prayer by Walton Weaver. You can get it again, Walton Weaver. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it so much.